Introducing the new council members, and it is my pleasure to do that. The newly elected council for the year 2023 to December 2024 is made up of the following personalities. We have Professor Kofi Opokunti as the incoming, incoming president. president. We have Professor Roland Achu Ayi, Vice President. <laughs> Professor, you better come up here. He is the Vice President for the Arts Session. Yes, please. You can sit further and there, please. Close the podium, please. Next, we have Emerita Professor Isabella A. Kwachi, Vice President, Sciences Section. Next, we have Professor Helen Eater, Honorary Secretary. Already seated. Thank you very much. Other members are Reverend Professor Johnson 
Ke Asamoa Jedu. This time, not Jedu. Thank you very much, bro. Thank you very much, bro. We have Professor Alfred Apel Otin Yabua, council member. <laughs> Professor Adams B. Bodum. <laughs> Thank you, Prof. <laughs> Professor Benjamin Kwajo Ahunu, B.K. Ahunu. Ah, there he comes. Professor B.K. Ahunu, former. Prof, you can come here. There's a seat for you, please. You can sit there. Former Honorary Secretary. You are welcome, Prof. Professor Andrew Anthony Ajay. Professor Andrew Anthony Ajay. Prof, you are welcome. And last, but not the least, Emeritus, Professor Samuel Kofi Sefadidi. Immediate past <laughs> president. Prof, you are welcome. I'm still here, oh, Prof. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> without mentioning it, the, the honorary treasurer is uh, uh, missing in action. I think we'll attend to that later. Yes, please. Yes, please. Thank you very much. Honorable fellows, the new Council of Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences. Thank you. We would now invite the outgoing president, Professor Sifadede, to give a remark. Thank you, Executive Secretary, for the introductions. The President of the Academy, past Presidents of the Academy, Vice Presidents of the Academy, and past Vice Presidents of the Academy, incoming Council Members, past Council Members, distinguished Fellows of the Academy, the Executive Secretary, and staff of the Secretariat. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. And welcome to this official handing over ceremony and presentation of the chain of office to the new president of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences. At the last general meeting of fellows, a new council was elected to steer the affairs of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences for the years 2023 and 2024. The Executive Secretary has introduced the distinguished fellows comprising the new council. Congratulations to all of you distinguished fellows who have been elected to serve on the Council of the Academy. We are gathered here today to formally hand over to the President and the new Council. I am sure you will bring your combined experiences and commitment to see the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences to achieve its mission and vision during the period of your tenure. We wish you well in this endeavor. I am informed that Professor Lade Wosonu, 
has indicated his inability to serve. And the president is taking steps for his replacement on the council. Today's activity should, be, should have been held last, last month to initiate the new council into office, but had to be scheduled to today to allow the president-elect to be available for the ceremony. I have already shared my handing over notes electronically with him on January 5th of this year. He is fully briefed on actions that require his urgent attention. Today, I will share a hard copy of these notes with him. Before I present the handing over notes to the president of the academy, I would like to express my profound appreciation to all who served with me on council the last two years. Justice Professor Henry Tamensa Bonsu, the immediate past president before me, Emerita Professor Isabella Kwache, who was vice president for sciences, Professor Kofi Opokunti, who was vice president for arts, Professor Helen Yita, who was honorary secretary, Professor Ladewo Sonu, who was honorary treasurer, Professor Alfred Otin Yeboa was a member of council. Emerita Professor Techua Menu was also a member of council. Reverend Professor Johnson Asamoa Jedu, member of council. Professor Arthur C. Sakifio and Dr. Eugenia Datiba. Thank you for your support and the many initiatives we worked together during our tenure. I acknowledge fellows of the academy who in diverse ways supported the work of the council and the academy. Special acknowledgement to the executive secretary and all staff of the secretariat for your support throughout our tenure. It has been a very exciting time of service and we are grateful for the opportunity given us to serve this academy, and we wish the new council well. Now, it is my pleasure to hand over my notes, handing over notes, and these handing over notes have several attachments, so the electronic version had several files attached to help the president. It's my pleasure to invite President-elect to come and receive his handing over notes, a fiscal copy. It is my prayer that these notes will guide you to settle down as president of the academy into the many activities and issues which will require your attention. It will be a pleasure to provide any further clarifications needed and be assured of my support. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Sifa Didi. We now come to the formal handing over of office. What I'm doing is that in the symbol of authority and the control of council general meeting. <laughs> then you have the chain of office. Which is huge to get the next question. Okay. We 
humbly invite you to decorate the income. So, ladies and gentlemen, this afternoon, Fred, Kofi is handing over to another Kofi. <laughs> Uh, professor, Emeritus Professor Sifa Dede, with this ceremony, I now delete from our records the word elect used to describe Prof. You are now President of Ghana Academy of Arts and Science. You are welcome, Prof. Another round of applause. We now I humbly invite President Professor Kofi Okokunti to give us some remarks. Prof, you are invited to speak. Thank you, thank you for the decoration and for the gavel. And I'm going to use it judiciously to, to get order when there is noise. Emeritus Professor Samuel Kofi Sefadidi, immediate past president of Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences, former president of the Ghana Academy former vice presidents of the Ghana Academy, members of the outgoing council, colleague members of the new council, distinguished fellows of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences, executive secretary and staff of the secretariat, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the incoming council, I thank the sections and the general meeting of fellows for nominating and electing us to the Council of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences for the years 2023 to 2024. I thank you on behalf of the principal officers for the confidence and trust you have bestowed on us to direct the affairs of the Academy. And I'm deeply honored for electing me as the President of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences. 
I assure you that I'll bring all my experience and skills to maintain the collegial atmosphere at the Academy and extend the remarkable programs and learning opportunities that the Academy provides to a wide range of audiences. The support and goodwill messages I have received from fellows and staff since my election as president have renewed and energized me to work hard for the Academy. Let us remind ourselves that we are the inheritors of one of the oldest academies of sciences in Africa. It took a lot of courage and foresight for our founder to imagine and believe, and believe that an academy of learning could be nurtured and sustained in the Ghana of the 1950s. We must indeed honor and appreciate all the fellows and officers, deceased and living, who have contributed to the survival and growth of the academy. It is no mean accomplishment to create and sustain the diversity of scholarly activities our academy has offered one year, year after year, to a land thirsty for knowledge and solutions, and yet not particularly interested in intellectual engagement or persistent inquiry. Let us salute all our past presidents and council and councils for their outstanding contributions to the lively and purposeful intellectual culture at the Academy and for managing the Secretariat to support and facilitate the delivery of our outreach programs. It is my privilege and honor, my, it is my privilege to recognize and honor our outgoing president, Emeritus Professor Samuel Kofi Sevadidi. He has done a tremendous job for the Academy and we should be thankful. Under his leadership, the outgoing council embarked on the following transformational initiatives. It strengthened the Secretariat's capacity to support policy and fundraising activities, while improving standards and delivery mechanisms at the Secretariat. For the first time, there is a draft GAAS Secretariat operational manual awaiting review and adoption by fellows, and there are ongoing initiatives to, main, to mainstream quality assurance into secretariat operations. The Council diversified the scope of GAS activities by encouraging teams of fellows to seek funding to support research and technology projects. GAS achieved spectacular success in this endeavor. One, we received significant funding to collaborate with COCO Board to conduct research on COCO as an enhancer in the treatment of COVID-19 and other infectious diseases. Two, we received a grant from Carnegie Corporation of New York to conduct research on policy dialogues on higher education reforms in Ghana. And three, we won a seed grant from the Inter-Academic Partnership to develop a proposal to establish a science and technology center in Ghana. Emeritus Prof, thank you very much for these path-breaking achievements. You have handed over, but you remain an ex-officio member of the 2023-2024 Council. We value your insights and appreciate your vision and accomplishment during your presidency. We will seek your advice and guidance as we continue to bring some of the things you started to fruition. I also congratulate and thank the GAS Project team leaders, Professor Lede Wasonu, Wasonu Emerita Prof. Techua Menu, and Professor Henry Wellington, for their imagination and persistence. I assure them that the councils, I assure them of council support and wish them success in the execution of their projects. Let me situate the transformative initiatives I just discussed in the framework defined by the GAS Strategic Plan 2020 to 2025. This important document guided the work of the outgoing council and will continue to delineate the scope of work for the incoming council. The strategic plan articulates GAS's vision to be, quote, Ghana's foremost merit-based society, learning society, committed to national development and advancement of our world. The strategic plan identifies five pillars or critical success factors that should govern and direct our plans, priorities, and actions in our quest for the vision. 
These five factors center on people, stakeholders, processes, funding, and grants. We need to, on the people's side, we need to create a dynamic and committed community for people within the academy. On the stakeholder side, we want to leverage our relationship with stakeholders to validate our relevance. On processes, we want to strengthen our processes for high performance and accountability. And on funding, we want to become attractive for funding support. On a brand, we want to grow our thought, we want to grow our brand as thought leader and repository of cutting edge skills and knowledge. You can see that the accomplishment of the outgoing council that I highlighted above moved us along several fronts in pursuit of our vision. They are laying the foundation for the Secretariat to deliver quality and high performance work to support fellows and the academy. The research and technology projects extended our relationship with new stakeholders through funding support and collaboration. These activities will validate and enhance our ability to attract additional funding support. We are proving that we can organize and bring together cutting edge skills and knowledge to compete for research and policy projects and we will consolidate our relevance if we can craft and successfully implement a science and technology center in Ghana where young people can playfully learn and apply science, technology, engineering, and mathematics in diverse settings. The incoming council is fully aware that the academy can make a lot of progress by building upon, operationalizing, and implementing issues raised in our strategic plan. This council is fully committed to working collaboratively with fellows and staff to pursue the vision and transformative agenda for, for and in the, the strategic plan. We will use it as the organizing framework for setting our priorities and scoping our projects during the next two years. However, we need to realize that some of our deeply held assumptions and routines that have worked for us in the past may not provide sufficient energy and trust to move us, qualitative, move us to the qualitatively higher level envisaged in the strategic plan. Our three messages, three messages, the first one says, GAAS is not a secret society. In his acceptance speech two years ago, the outgoing president remarked that there are perceptions that GAS is an elitist closed club for professors of the University of Ghana and their friends. I quote you. There is a fine line between a closed club and a secret society. We do not want GAS to be a closed club or a secret society, but I want to explore the idea of a secret society to put in sharp relief some of the things we need to do to achieve our vision of preeminence. The secret society is usually exclusive, promises superior status or knowledge to members, and of secret rituals or initiation for membership progression. We know that GAS does not have secret rituals or hierarchy of members or grand and grandmasters. Yet outsiders are always puzzled about how people get nominated or assessed to become fellows. We are not a secret society, yet it is difficult for outsiders to know who the members of GAS are and what are their areas of expertise. One of the strategic objectives of GAS strategic plan is to broaden the base and profile of fellow, of potential fellows. We are charged to develop a framework for scanning pro profiles and identifying modern day achievers for nomination as fellows, especially women. We need to strengthen GAS's capacity in emergent and potential field and high impact fields and disciplines. Fellows should serve as role models and attractors of modern day achievers in emergent and high impact fields. We should make it easy for people to identify and communicate with fellows. We should, we should make it easy to know for, for people to know the range of expertise covered by fellows. And we should encourage fellows to be more visible as experts on topical and contemporary issues. Let us break away from a society model 
by exhibiting a profile of fellows on our website, setting up working groups of fellows to comment on time-sensitive national and global issues, and organizing occasional press soirees to, in to increase public awareness of the academy. Message number two, GAAS should not be doing outreach only. Should not be doing outreach only. The Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences has an extensive program of activities. We have inaugural lectures by newly inducted fellows, annual lectures in the arts and sciences, public forums on topical national issues, the J.B. Danko Memorial Lectures, IFRA Memorial Lectures, and the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Lectures and Founders Week Symposium. Our calendar is very full, and we sometimes struggle to find slots for inaugural lectures. Yet, there's a persistent sentiment among fellows that the academy may be short of relevance and impact. This is largely because the perceived role, our, the academy's perceived role as a principal advisor to government appears muted and unstructured. A former president of the academy, Nana Dr. SKB Asante, recently suggested to council that the annual program of activities should be modified that lectures, public forums, and symposia should be radically reduced to enable the academy to focus on advisory and policy aspects of its mandate. Let me remind you that a key strategic objective in the, in the plan is to make the academy more present in the lives of fellows. We are charged to diversify activities for engagement. With specific reference to chapters, funded projects, and commissioned publications. The second objective is to restore the academy's role as principal ad advisory body to national leadership. We are charged to lobby government and other national bodies about the academy's capacity in areas of concern. The third objective is to ensure that the academy collaborates with ministries, departments, and agencies. We are charged to identify current and critical areas of interest to MDAs and they develop proposals for consideration. So we can see that Nana SKB Asante's suggestion aligns very well with the GAS strategic plan. We all understand that the diversifying away from our traditional activities will involve some trade-offs and substitutions. But we cannot say whether they will be radically reduced. If you are not at full capacity, it is possible to do, to do more things with less or same resources. We need to improve on the relevance and impact of the academy. Fellows will reap enormous benefits and satisfaction if we successfully reposition the academy as a leading provider of commission studies, policy, and advisory services. Let me share with you some, some of my ideas about how we might change the scope and range of our activities. Currently, the Academy does a lot of outreach activities where we hold lectures, forums, and symposiums to educate or inform a target population about an issue of national concern. Even though we may make impact on decision makers and the public through our outreach programs, it is difficult to attribute any changes in knowledge, behavior, or beliefs of the target population directly to our efforts. Our outreach activities are first class, but they should not be an end in themselves. They should provide linkages and support to our projected commission studies, policy, and advisory services. For example, we can mind the attendee list and speakers at our lectures and symposium to identify potential contacts, collaborators, and targets for our projected policy and advisory services. The chapters are the organs through which we, we can deliver studies, policies, outputs, and advisory service. And we must incentivize and empower them to scan the environment, identify MDAs or private sector entities who can be prospected with concept notes or proposals for funding. Council is ready to support and work closely with chapters to develop capacity and, and collaborate with potential sponsors. We should update our chapter membership and every fellow should be duly registered to two or more chapters. 
At the next general meeting of fellows, I would like to ask us to complete the chapter registration exercise, have the chapters meet thereafter, and elect chairs and deputy chairs as necessary, and then we can arrange for the chapter officers and council to meet and brainstorm on the way forward for gas policy and advisory services. Let me stress that the vision and priorities described above will require us to develop an entrepreneurial mindset. We are currently supply driven. We have inducted fellows and accumulated an enviable collection of experts. But there is a big gap between what we believe we can do and what we, can actu what we actually do in the policy and advisory domains. We need to become market driven and customer oriented. We need to build the necessary business model and infrastructure to support the transformation process we envisage. We should realize that it will take some time, some learning, experimentation to discover what works for us. It could be a slow process with disappointments and false starts, but I believe there will be growth and eventual success. We have the advantage that the Academy has a lot of smart, experienced, and influential fellows who can direct and lead the process. We must let them put together multidisciplinary teams of fellows that can work well together, assess the needs of the MBAs, of the MDAs and provide creative and effective solutions to address those needs. We should ben benchmark our projected activities and re revenue model against those of sister academies to evaluate our progress and performance against best practices. Our revenue model should be sustainable, cost-effective, and attractive to fellows who develop and participate in funded projects. We can do great outreach work using volunteers, but funded projects thrive on market-driven and competitive remunerations. Third message, we are a Ghana Academy. I would like to suggest that Ghana's vision, that GAS's vision to be Ghana's foremost merit-based learning society requires that we continually think, continuously think about what it means to be a Ghana Academy. I emphasize the word Ghana. It's in capitals. We are in Ghana for a purpose. The opportunities and challenges in Ghana, the opportunities and challenges in Ghana generate the raw materials for our intellectual inquiries and explorations. We in Ghana have to solve a different set of problems to ensure our survival and progress in the larger world. Our knowledge and experience operating in our environment gives us unique insights and advantages that others may not have. Like our contemporaries elsewhere, we have to create knowledge and develop skills and tools to solve Ghana's problems. We contribute to the advancement of our world when we discover or invent or produce a universal thing or idea that the world values or can use by the rest of the world. From time to time, we may come up with a globally competitive idea or product that takes the world or our region by storm. These are generally rare events, but we can multiply or accelerate the occurrences if we operate at the right scale, invest resources, and develop the necessary institutional and technological infrastructure. We should be bold and critical, and critically participate in the great debates of our times, knowing that our ideas matter, and that no region, countries, peop or peoples have a monopoly on the best ideas. Above all, we should be aware that there are lots of ideas and opinions that are faulty or self-serving, but can gain a lot of traction when pushed or supported by powerful interests. Many ideas, concepts, and fashions that were supposed to be universal decades ago are now considered parochial or provincial. So when we think of universal ideas, we, we are also candidates to give universal ideas. As a Ghana Academy, we should help define the types of problems that need to be solved in Ghana and to help attract the best minds and innovators to provide solutions to these problems. We should also serve as gatekeepers and ensure that we do not divert our limited resources into solving other people's problems or letting other people define the types of problems we work on. However, we should be mindful that 
we need to collaborate and enter into alliances and partnerships with the rest of the world in order to learn and stay abreast with emerging technologies and ideas. We should also influence and support the development of the necessary institutional and technological infrastructure for innovation and creativity in Ghana. Last but not least, the Ghana Academy should do some introspection and codify the great Ghanaian traditions that has governed its practice and evolution during the last 63 years. For example, the ceremony we are just doing, the handing over the transmission of authority and all of that, we should codify them and submit it to the rest of the world. Let me end by thanking all the fellows who join us at this afternoon's handing over program. I also recognize fellows who could not make it here, but are out here in spirit. The new council will count on your support, on the support of all fellows as we pursue the agenda and priorities outlined above. I encourage fellows to reach out to the president, the vice presidents, council members, and chapter heads whenever you have ideas or suggestions that will make us a better academy. We need to hear from you from time to time. Encourage us when you think we are doing the right things and alert us when things are not going that well. I thank the secretariat for organizing this program and I thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Dear fellows, I think we can give him a better round of applause. We now invite the Honorary Secretary, Professor Ita, for some short uh, in-house announcement. Thank you, Mr. Abwaji. And, uh, and thank you, Mr. President, for your remarks. As we draw near the end of this program, uh, there are a few announcements that um, I'd like to make mainly um, next week uh, we will have the JB Dankwa Memorial Lectures. They will be held from Monday the 20th to Wednesday the 22nd of February. The lectures will be delivered by Reverend Professor Kwabna Samwajedu, Fellow of the Academy and President of the Trinity Theological Seminary at Legon. The topic for the lectures is African Politics and the Mystical Realm, Religion and Governance in Postcolonial Ghana. This promises to be a very exciting um, three-day program and I look forward to seeing you all at this event. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much, Honorary Secretary. We now humbly invite Professor, Reverend Professor Asamoah Jedu for the closing prayer. I'd like to very kindly ask us to stand as we go in the blessing of God. We thank you, gracious Lord. We committed this handing over event into your hands, and we have come to a very successful end. 
We want to thank you for the grace with which the immediate past council served. We want to thank you for the new council that has taken over. We pray that as we make our plans, you will direct our steps and trust that the agenda that has been laid down will be executed effectively so that the mandate of the council will be successful and all who are interested in what we do in this nation at large will be blessed by our work. As we leave this place, we pray that your presence will go with us. Continue to bless our food and water. We ask for good health and strength, wisdom for our leadership, and trust that your grace will accompany all of us in all we do. And now grace, mercy, and peace from God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest and abide with all of us now and always.